want to be in my video? What do you think? You too? Hi friends, I'm back with an update about, about my health. <laughs> Um, this time I'm not going to cry. I'm joined by some special guests. As you can see, Dixie and Penny have come out. Um, and so I wanted to, uh, first of all, offer a huge thank you because um, all of the messages, all of the uh, little notes and well wishes and um, stories that you've shared with me have been so inspiring and have been incredibly uplifting. So thank you to all of the friends who reached out. It's really meant the world. So let me give you a little bit of an update. Um, as you may recall, I um, experienced symptoms of stroke a couple months ago and uh, left the hospital without a diagnosis. And so today we still do not have a diagnosis. We know that the lesion that was found on my brain was originally 15 millimeters and actually grew to 26 millimeters, which obviously was pretty frightening to hear from the doctor. Um, that was um, the results of the second MRI. But uh, it's actually a good thing. Um, just like with any bruise, a lesion is, is blood on your brain. And so just like any bruise, it will, it'll, it'll start out dark and small. And then as it heals, it kind of like blossoms or flowers. Um, and, and so that, that's what was happening. Um, I'm almost completely symptom free, which is why I'm going to be attempting tap dancing this week. So that should be fun. Um, but also this week is um, my third MRI, my third recent MRI uh, on Friday. So um, I will look forward to sharing those results with you. One of the funny things that's kind of happened or come out of this is realizing that um, when I got news that it wasn't a stroke, I was disappointed. And I know that that might sound kind of funny, um, but when I thought it was a stroke, I knew that um, it was up to me to start to reconnect my brain to uh, my motor function. And um, when I found out it wasn't a stroke, I was disappointed because that took things out of my control. So I started to look for a, a way or ways that I could regain my control. If you know me, you know that I, I'm a little bit of a control freak. That's, that's okay. We all have our quirks. Um, and so I decided that um, regardless of any diagnosis, uh, the, the things that I could do to, to make positive change were going to be to eat right, to rest well, to exercise more, and to stress less. And so I've been working really hard on that, although it's not, it, it's not perfect, but it's coming along. And um, what else did I have to tell you? Um, one minute. Um, I think that, that might be my update for now. Pause. Ah, oh, yes, I remember the other thing I wanted to tell you that um, as of right now, or as of my my last call with my um, neurologist, um, if she, it, while she did find um, high oligoclonic, I can I can never say it right. Um, I tested really high for something that um, could. Um, indicate a potential autoimmune disease. So they haven't ruled out everything yet. Um, they still want to send me to the MS clinic in the next couple months. Um, but for now, um, and we'll see with this MRI on Friday, for now the doctor is pretty content in labeling this a one-time event. So the irony of course being we won't know if it's a one-time event until either um, it happens again or until the day I die. But that's not the point. The point is that that was really positive news from the doctor and I'm really pleased to be sharing that with um, all of you. So thank you again for your love and support. I made it through the video without crying. We'll see you soon. <laughs> the panting is really... <laughs> I'm very popular. <laughs> <laughs>